In this video, I'll be showing you the basics of MIDI effect racks. Now, audio effect racks and MIDI effect racks are essentially the same thing, but the reason I save MIDI effect racks for this video is because MIDI effects only work with MIDI, anything that requires MIDI information, like virtual instruments. So MIDI effects and MIDI effect racks are kind of useless on an audio track. If you'd like to follow along with this video, all you have to do is load up a virtual instrument. I'll be using the session that I used to show you the basics of MIDI inside of Ableton. So if you followed along with that video and you already have these instruments loaded up and MIDI clips, then you can just grab that session and use that to follow along with this video. All I have loaded up right now are drums and a piano. And if you look here on the drums, we have the clip that we created with um, just a basic drum pattern. And then on the piano, we have this kind of bass pro chord progression that we, that we made, and then also some uh, really short kind of notes. Now the first thing we'll do is we'll go over to the browser window again. So we'll click on this little triangle, and then if we go to our MIDI effects, you'll see that we have all these different effects to choose from. And we could just go in and grab a chord. So we'll just grab a major chord, and we'll drag and drop that on the MIDI or the grand piano. And then you'll see that the MIDI shows up before the virtual instrument. The next thing I'll do is we'll go grab a scale plugin. So we'll just go grab the C major scale. And then we can just make changes to the scale and put it in whatever scale that we want to put it in. And now I can select both of these MIDI effects by clicking on one and holding shift and clicking on the other. And then I can group them by hitting command G or using a right click and then clicking on group. So you'll see that this creates a MIDI effect rack. You can just see by the name right here on the side. And so now both of these MIDI effect plugins are inside of this effect rack and it sits before the virtual instrument. So the MIDI notes in this MIDI clip are going to pass through this MIDI effect rack and then pass through the virtual instrument. And you'll see that we have the same three buttons so I can open up the macro knobs and I can in fact open up the Chain, uh, the chain window. Now the macro knobs in the MIDI effect rack work just like they do inside of the audio effect rack. So if I go over to this scale selector, I can right click and hit map to macro one. And now that scale selector shows up right here and I can just use this. So if I close everything else out, then all I need to do is change the scale. Then this is where I can do it at. Now if I open it up and you look at the chain window, you'll see that you still have the chain selector like we did in the audio effects rack but we also have a couple more features so we have the velocity and the key as well and I'll get into those in just a second the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new chain and then what we can do is we can take this major chord and this C major chord and we can copy them over to this other chain so I just held down option and clicked and drag it over into this other chain. So it's the same two chains. Yeah, yeah. Two chains. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this arpeggiator effect into this chain right here. So you'll see that this chain right here has just the major chord and the major scale. And then this chain has the major chord, the major scale, and the arpeggiator. And you'll see that the, the scale selector is mapped to the macro the macro one still so this one it's still mapped and this one is still mapped as well so if I change either one of these they're going to stay within the same scale so if you remember from the last video if we go to our chain selector we can drag this one out and I can right click and I can say distribute ranges equally and you'll see that it splits between the two and so if I hit play on this MIDI clip it's only going to play MIDI notes through this chain as long as the chain selector is in this blue area. And then as soon as I move over to this blue area, it'll start sending the MIDI notes through this chain. So I'll hit play and I'll show you that. If you watch these meters, you'll see that they change. So you can see that the meters were changing as I was changing the chain selector. So when I move the chain selector over here, it's only passing the MIDI notes through this chain, and then it's sending it over to the MIDI instrument. Or if I move the chain selector over to this blue area, it's sending the MIDI notes through this second chain, 
and then which has the arpeggiator, arpeggiator on it, and then it goes through the piano. So that's one way you can select through the different chains in order to play different things. The other thing is you can start to do it by velocity and you can do it by keys as well. So I'll set both of these chains back to one. So that way it's always playing both of them at the same time. And then if I go to velocity, I can change where it's playing at based off of the velocity. So I'll right click again and I'll just distribute ranges equally just to make it simple. So I'll hit play right now. And you'll see that these notes are playing in gray. The reason you're not hearing anything is because we have our chain selector selected somewhere where it's not going through either one of these. So I'll move this back over. So you can hear that it's playing the chords and not the arpeggiated pattern because the note, the velocities are within this range. So if I go back here into the MIDI clip and I hit play, I'll select all of these notes and I'll change the velocities. So you can see just by changing the velocities, I can start to change which MIDI chain that it's actually going through. So we'll jump back over here, and then I'll reset these back to where they were. And we have velocities reset, and then now you can do the same thing with the keys. So we have our chain selector set, so it's playing through both of these at the same time, as long as all of these other requirements are met. So we'll go into the keys, and if I hit play, so I'll just distribute ranges equally for this one as well, just to keep them separate. And if I hit play, you'll see that the bottom notes are inside of this range, so then it's playing the chords, but this other note is playing up in this other range, so it's playing through the arpeggiated one. So we'll rename this one. We'll name it chord. And we'll rename this one arp for arpeggiated. And then what I'll do is I'll take this MIDI clip and I'll just copy it down, duplicate it, Command-D, or you can right click. And what I'll do now is I'll change the notes up here and I'll just drag it out so it's one long note. And now you'll be able to hear the difference between the chords and the arpeggiated one because you'll hear the arpeggiator in action. So I'll hit play on this. And you can see that just the one note that's playing up in the higher octave range is playing through the arpeggiated MIDI uh, effects and then the lower notes, the, the more bass pattern, is playing the chords through the, the chord MIDI effects. So I'll zoom in so you can see that. And that's how you can use the key feature inside of the chain window. You're essentially splitting up the keyboard into different ranges and making use of those different ranges in different ways. Once you have an effect rack that you like and you'd like to use later, then you can go here and click on this little, looks like a little floppy disk icon. If you click on that, you can essentially save the MIDI rack somewhere, and then you can just call this maybe chord arp. We'll just call it chord arp. And then if you save that, it'll rename the MIDI effect rack, and it'll also save it inside of your MIDI effects rack. And if you ever want to get rid of anything, you can just go in here and click on it, and then just hit delete and it'll ask you to make sure that you want to get rid of it. And then I'll just undo that, because I don't need to save this. But essentially you can grab that MIDI effect rack and then just apply it to any virtual instrument that you happen to have uh, and that you, maybe you want to use this MIDI effect rack with. Now if all of this seems a bit overwhelming and you're not too stoked on trying to program or, or add any of this stuff in on your own, don't worry about it because there's plenty of people out there that offer free racks and they do a lot of this stuff or a lot of this stuff has already been done for you and I'll include some resources on this page so that way you can click on those and maybe go download some of those racks so you don't have to worry about programming them yourself. However, if you want more control and if you're trying to use maybe either the live performance aspect or if you just want to create some different MIDI chains for yourself, then this is a great start for you to be able to start understanding how you can really make use of that. In the next video, I'll be going over instrument racks.